Ready for round two of financial wisdom from the Bible? Last episode, we tackled honesty, debt, giving, and ownership. Today, we're turning the page to saving, investing, inheritance, and more. Brace yourselves, we're diving deep again. So let's get some perspective. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. We're so glad that you've joined us. My name is Sean Peters. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Bob Barber. Today, we're going to be covering part two of a series on what God's Word says about money. There are over 1,500 scriptures on stewardship and, you know, talking about money. So we think this is a really important topic to cover. And so we've divided this into eight total subjects. If you missed Part one, links in the description should be somewhere on screen as well. The last time we covered honesty, debt, giving, and ownership. We're going to be covering saving and investing, inheritance, seeking wise counsel, and faithfulness. You know, one of the things that I want to make sure that we say too, Sean, when you talk about scriptures, is that um, Jesus and, and all he spoke on, he spoke on stewardship more than heaven and hell combined, according to many biblical scholars. So that's, wow. that's yeah. a lot of... Of so maybe the, it's important. It's very, very important. It sure is. So like I say, if you didn't hear last week's, please go back and, and listen to it. We're giving you some really good information, but we're only covering about 20 of the 1500 scriptures. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So all don't, right. don't worry, we're not covering all of them. <laughs> all right. So let's get started with saving and investing. The, most people don't realize that scripture speaks into this, and it does. And it comes, uh, we have three scriptures that uh, I see that, that go with this. Proverbs mm-hmm. 13, 11, this honest money dwindles away, but he who who gathers money little by little makes it grow. Proverbs twenty one fifteen: the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. And Ecclesiastes eleven two: give portions to seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. We say that one a lot around here. We do. That is definitely one of our firm life verses, if you will. <laughs> so when I look at these scriptures, you know, they're talking about saving and they're talking about investing, but they're talking about it with wisdom. Mm-hmm. I see where these scriptures provide protection, and they talk about being frugal. That's right. You know, dishonest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money little by little. It's not get rich quick, Sean. Exactly. So that takes us into our, our for this particular subject, saving and investing. We have three real-life application areas to cover, saving with wisdom. So understanding the importance of diligently saving over time for financial security. We have protection. Having a diversified investment strategy can protect against unforeseen financial downturns. And of course, frugality. Being economical in your saving and investing can lead to long-term financial stability. So the next subject we're going to talk about today is inheritance. And uh, when it comes to inheritance, we're just going to go two scriptures today, but there's actually over 200 scriptures that have to do with inheritance. It's hard to pick just two. Yeah, it is. But I picked Proverbs 20, uh, 21, and Ecclesiastes 7, uh, 7 and 11. Proverbs 20, 21 says, an inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed in the end. Mm. There's a lot of thought behind that. And Ecclesiastes 7, 11 says, wisdom, like an inheritance, is a good thing and benefits those who see the sun. So, Sean, That's right. you know, I see that, that how we leave an inheritance to our children is extremely important. And if we leave it without wisdom, it can hurt them more than it can help That's them. right. That's right. And for our real-life application, how we leave inheritance to our children matters. The timing and thoughtfulness in leaving an inheritance can result in long-lasting family stability and blessing. You know, I know, Bob, like from from your personal experience, I know that you have your estate planning set up to where a certain percentage of the trust, everything that you have in your estate can be distributed out each year, but no more than that. That's correct. Specifically, so it will theoretically continue to last for multiple generations. And you even have, I believe, the church and maybe Compassion International. I do. And and focus on the family. That's right. That's right. And is is about 20% of my estate. That's right. And, yeah. Which and, is, again, is a great way, not not just for, for Bob's children, my wife being one of those, but it's one of those things that will allow it to last 
without it just being completely spent and depleted by the descendants, but also that continued blessing for charities and, and for expanding God's kingdom after God, Bob's gone to be with the Lord. So so that's something that you could do in, in your own estate planning. Another thing else that we put in there as an idea is it's for the, uh, the men of the family <laughs> to inherit their portion each year. They have to work for that. And so they basically get a matching grant for how much they worked. Yeah, okay, so it's, awesome. it's an incentive to work because work is a good thing. Exactly. And then, of course, wise inheritance. Yes. So inheritance shouldn't be given without wisdom because, again, as we said, it could hurt the children more than it helps. It can compound the problems of the child. Like if, if your child is receiving a large inheritance, but they haven't been able to show themselves faithful with what God has given them already, it'll just exacerbate that problem. And it basically amplifies whatever the weaknesses are that's right in, in the child and so it sure does so careful planning to make sure that what you're giving to them that what they're inheriting is ultimately going to help them going to bless them not ultimately make their life worse so this kind of takes us right into the next subject doesn't yep. it seeking wise counsel is, yes. a, is our number three for today and our first scripture on that is proverbs 15 22 which is one of my favorites yeah plans fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors they succeed and another one is from Psalms 1.1. In Psalms 1.1, you, you can look at it kind of two ways. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So blessed is the man that does walk in the counsel of wisdom, right? Yeah, that's so, right. Okay. Or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. So it's saying yeah. the man will be blessed if he's not walking in the counsel of the wicked. That's right. Right? That's right. So I, I look at that and I say, okay, what's the opposite of that? It basically, it's saying a man will be blessed, like right. you say, by walking in wisdom and God's yeah. word. So that reason, life, like the, there's a lot of real life application to this. Exactly. So the the first one, wise counsel over social media in Hollywood. Oh yeah. And I mean, our world is just saturated with information. Some of it good, much of it not. <laughs> yeah. And seeking the wisdom of trusted advisors rather than just whatever's popular on insert social media network of your choice here or whatever popular culture is talking about, it's it's critical. And, and, and when we say multiple advisors, you know, that could yeah. be like our, our, our firm, you know, Bob right. and I are both financial advisors at Christian Financial Advisors, but there's also, there's CPAs, there's attorneys, there's maybe you have a, a trusted older relative of some mm -hmm. kind, could be, could be a parent, grandparent, but someone who has shown themselves to be trusted with what God has given to them. You know, those are all examples of people that you can seek wise counsel from. And look at the traits that are listed for an elder or a deacon mm. in the third chapter of Timothy. We don't have that one as one we're sharing today, but I just thought but it is of that. a very good one. While yep. you're doing it, the third chapter of Timothy is a person with a good reputation, well known in their in their city. You know, uh, not drunkenness to much wine and alcohol, things yeah. like that. So yeah. it's got the really good virtues are there that you would want to look for in that wise counsel. And so going into our last topic or subject mm -hmm. for today, but it's faithfulness. So our scripture for this one is Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Which goes back to, I mean, I guess, like we said on multiple of these, you know, if you're seeking counsel or if you're receiving an inheritance, you know, whatever the case may be, you need to be someone that can be trusted with what you have been given, because if you can be trusted with a little, well, maybe you can be trusted with more. There's order in wisdom, and there's order in becoming wealthy as yeah. well. And that's where I see this, because it's basically saying, okay, you handled that that five dollars, you handled that five thousand, you handled that fifty thousand. Well, maybe I can bless you with a hundred thousand, or two hundred thousand, or even five hundred thousand. You handled that well. Now there's a million. So it can increase. And it says this right here, if you can be trusted with that little bit. Yeah. So, you know, you're thinking, I want to go way out there to the million or two million. How are you doing with the five or ten dollars in your pocket? How are you That's doing right. with credit cards? And that, that could be more closer at home, too, of not just, oh, that God, you know, somehow blessed you with money out of nowhere. Yeah. But, you know, in your your relationships, like maybe with your, your spouse, your kids, your job. You know, you're maybe with your church and, and volunteering, and that you you don't just get to be the leader all of a sudden. You don't get to be you the, work the high income up. earner. That's right. You know, you you earn your way to that. That you you show that you can be trusted and faithful with what God has already put on your plate, 
in in all areas of your life. So I like what you wrote down here, the real life application of this, Sean, and I know you wrote this. This is there is an order in becoming wealthy. That's right. Building wealth isn't just about having resources. It's about being faithful and managing whatever you have, large or small. Financial stability comes with time and faithful stewardship. So there you have it. There's parts one and two of what God's word says about money. Like you said, we shared about twenty and stewardship. We shared about 20 of the scriptures. And yeah. in last week's, if you didn't hear it, I would now invite you to go back and listen to that one of last week. We went over honesty, debt, giving, ownership, saving and investing, inheritance, seeking wise counsel, and, and faithfulness. faithfulness. What's amazing, there's just so much more in God's word, over 1,500 to 2,000 scriptures so hopefully this stewardship. inspired you. You know, again, we did not share all fifteen hundred to two thousand yeah. scriptures, but yeah. hopefully this has inspired you that we would encourage you to seek God's word and, and read this for yourself. I mean, you you can go to Bible.com and Bible Gateway, there's all those different places. Just you know, look for uh scriptures on honesty, scripture on inheritance, scripture well, and we on have this all on our website, Sean. We do. We have a lot of these on our website as well. So, we'll have a link in the description. Right. But you know, again, God's word says so much about this. So we, we hope this has encouraged you to you know, seek this more to look into this yourself. Don't just take our word for it. Go, go look at God's word. And I think that'll wrap it up for today. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, love you leave a comment. You can also contact us via phone or our website. That's 830-609-6986. Call or text. You can also visit christianfinancialadvisors.com. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to like and comment and subscribe to our channel so you can get future updates. You can also follow us on social media, handle shown on screen. In the meantime, check out one of these other videos.